human mind is constantly having to adjust to a pace of life that's far faster than a human mind could ever adjust to. And Berdyaev is afraid that reason itself, which is based on freedom, and therefore based on spirit and immateriality, doesn't have any place to stand anymore. The one thing that Berdyaev says is clear about the 20th century is that all idols have fallen, including the idol of atheism. The only thing that's left is technology. A technology and a science controlled by a small elite assuming that the human being is merely just another chunk of matter that therefore can be legitimately manipulated for uh, the pleasure and the needs and the desires of that initiated elite who control technology and science. That the world of the average person in the 20th century is based on the world that is created by technics. But if the world is created by technics, that means that organic life no longer exists as any kind of organizing force. And in fact, what does organize things are machinery, and more importantly, the scientific establishment that controls that machinery. Here's the thing. Berdyaev is holding that humanity is necessarily free because of its spiritual nature and vice versa. A spiritual nature means that it's free in the sense that it's not necessarily manipulated and dominated by cause and effect. You know, the way that atoms in, in, in nature are, and energy in nature is. The problem with that, specific to the 20th century, is that technology and the scientific elite who controls it is in charge of organizing the day-to-day -day life of humanity. Therefore, humanity is assumed to be material and therefore not free. The result of all of that is that the scientific elite, the scientific establishment, that's not science, by the way. Let's make it clear. There's a huge difference between science and the scientific establishment. I mean, science is a legitimate search for truth. The scientific establishment is a wealthy, powerful, self-interested group of people who have a vested interest in maintaining their power and authority over society. Two very different things. They're not just different, they're opposed to each other. They're opposite each other. That the machine is their Frankenstein monster. They have created the machine and it has deadened the sensitivity of the human mind and human feelings. Integrity, moral, free integrity of a free people has given way to stratification and even worse, managerialism. The idea that the day-to-day -day life of the average person the average man is in fact organized by a scientific elite for the sake of the profit of the few, of the um, initiated, for lack of a better word. Now, the old elites in European history were warriors and statesmen and philosophers and monks and saints. Our new elite is the scientific establishment and the managers really uh, another word for a bureaucrats who in a purely routinized way in a purely routinized day to day life administer the life of almost all of humanity at least in Europe and America managerialism means that the mediocre world of the bureaucrat dominates over everything. That this managerial elite is at the root, unconsciously so, but at the root of totalitarianism, whether it be of the Soviet variety or of the late 20th century Anglo-American variety. Either way, it is totalitarian in the sense that it manifests itself in every strata of human life. 
But that this totalitarianism, however it's manifested historically in the 20th century, and the early 21st century, is based on technology and the scientific elite. And to support the scientific revolution, which is another way of saying the coup d'etat of the scientific elite, scientific establishment over human governments, and that includes the social sciences, and it includes economics, especially the economics of banking, you have to take seriously then its control and routinization and bureaucratization of all aspects of human life. So, Berdaya finds himself, though, having, you know, I, it, it, that's very, very difficult to gainsay, everything that he's saying here. That's the basis of his criticism of modernity as a whole, whether it be Bolshevik Russian or uh, Prussian German or Anglo-American, either way, it's based on the same set of assumptions that goes by the name of the social sciences. What he's talking about, of course, isn't necessarily the idea of social reform because social reform imposed from above can never be any improvement over that which it's trying to reform because it still is based on a bureaucratic elite or a party elite or both, and it's usually both. And either way, it's based on coercion. And Berdyaev sees in Russia and elsewhere that the concept of revolution for most people really is just an excuse for antisocial behavior. It's an excuse for people to destroy that which threatens them or that which they don't like. But worst of all, Berdaya fears the concept of system. All systems, whether they be of, uh, of the economy or of thought or of anything else, they reduce the individual as a, to a means. The individual becomes a means to an end. The individual is not taken seriously in and of himself, but become, he becomes a functionary. He becomes a bureaucrat. At root here, Berdyaev is holding that there is a really an, an, an irreconcilable distinction between the real integral personality and the outside world. Because there is this chasm between the free will manifest in the spiritual soul, as it must be, and the world outside the soul based on cause and effect, and therefore, based on those elites who can manipulate that cause and effect, and therefore, in turn, is based on an initiated oligarchy who controls the world of technics that, in turn, can manipulate and control the world of cause and effect. So there are three great evils here. There is that radical individualism, collectivism, and democracy. All of these things are equally evil because the individual is, uh, you know, if, if brought under the concept of ideology, that is to say individualism, is evil because the integral personality is very, very different from the ego. In a materialistic world, you could still have an ego. The ego simply wishes, wishes to dominate uh, the external